Hi, this is Sam Estes. I am with CineSamples, and I'm going to be showing you our newest library from the Artist series called Randy's Teleste. We were fortunate enough to get Randy Kerber to come into Sony to show us how he designed the Teleste for Harry Potter and numerous other films he's used it for. And he came in and set up his gear and his rig and basically created the sound that he used for all the Harry Potter films and some of the other things. And we recorded it in Sony, had his speaker set up and the microphone set up and everything, and got the sound that he used when he originally first recorded this for the trailer. And this was the sound that we first heard, and it was done at Sony, and it was done with this Celeste. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Randy's Celeste. There should be a sound of a Celeste here, but, you know, it's not loaded yet. I don't know. We'll fix it in post. So we're actually going to be releasing this in two different formats. The UVI workstation, which is part of the Mach 5 library type thing, and Contact 4.2, the full version, not the player. So if you do want to get this instrument without having to buy an external software, we recommend doing the UVI workstation. You will, however, need an iLock. Just that's how the copy protection works for UVI workstation. So you will need an iLock for that. Be aware. But it is a free player. So if you don't have Contact Full or you don't have Mach, Mach 5, you can get a free player. So with that being said, let's take a look at the UVI workstation first. The way the UVI workstation works in terms of this browser, then you open this little guy up or double click like I did, and you can see the various places that this exists. So if you wanted to have a specific place, you can just click and drag the folder in and it will end up showing up. So if you can see here, here's my Mach 5, and here's where it shows up. So here's Randy's Celeste. You double click on the UFS file, it opens up the different patches, in this case, there's just one patch. And so you can open up a M5P file, and that's how this works. If you want to add it to the sound banks to begin with, so a sound bank is a UFS file, and with any other future library that uh, you may purchase for the UVI workstation, you can add in sound banks here. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either do it manually, where you can open up um, your library here. So this is the Mac 5 library application support UVI sound banks and you basically go to where the UFS file is and you create an alias and you just drag the alias into this library application support UVI sound banks alias and you just remove this and then whenever you load up the UFS workstation you or the UVI workstation it will automatically show up in your sound banks and all you have to do is just click on Randy's Celeste and the M5P will automatically be there. You click OK, and there you go. You cannot drag it, however, from this to here just because that's just not how it works. So here's the UVI workstation, Randy's Trust. Lovely, isn't it? So we have a very basic GUI setup for you so you can just quickly access what you need to access for this instrument. We have a basic ADSR control, which is just a attack and release. There's no decay or sustain or anything like that, but it's just attack and release. As you can see, when I move my mouse over the knobs, the, the little help icon comes up and tells you exactly what's going on with it. If I move it, you can see it's changing the milliseconds of the attack and say when the release and whatnot. If I want to go back to the original presets that I had, you hold down the option key for, uh, for Mac and the alt key I think for PC and it'll go back to the original predetermined default that both Randy and I had worked on to make it sound as close to the original as possible. So if you wanted to change the attack and get a little bit more sweet I guess a little less harsh you can do that and the release the same just makes it a little bit longer of a tail. Reverb, same thing, change the wetness, so it's just completely all wet if you wanted to. Uh, you can change the length of the tail so it's shorter. You can turn it off so it's nice and short. You can add in the delay. You can also add in high pass and low pass. click the option key to turn it off 
And that's kind of the basic GUI and the different sounds of it. You can also automate any of these by uh, right clicking or control clicking on the Mac and assigning it to a modulation. So if you see, I can move my mod wheel. Ooh, attack. So I can quickly do this if I wanted to. And you can unassign un it. If you really want to get into the headiness of it, you can go into the effects and start changing effects and changing things like the width and like precise delay times if you wanted to get in there. Um, you can also change it off of sync and go in here and actually do milliseconds and whatnot. But we don't recommend that since this is tied to our GUI interface. You can also add in some of the effects that already come with this. That's very nice and cool. There's lots of really trippy effects that you can do to it. Do that. I can add distortion since this is a really pretty instrument and might as well make it not pretty. <laughs> Boy, I'm such a geek. Okay, so. Uh, one of the other really cool features that comes with UVI Workstation is the arpeggiator. It's just an automatic arpeggiation that can go in. You have a lot of defaults that they already have. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, enough of that. So, enable that. So, that's the effects. And here's the regular part again. So the way UVI works is you can add in all these different parts, which are basically tracks. And the A1, A2, A3 is basically just your MIDI port, just uh, has four ports with 16 channels each. And yeah, so you can set different auxiliaries, octaves, semi-tuning, fine-tuning, polyphony. You can set all that kind of stuff and add as many as you want. Now notice if you do go back to here, it says, oh, it's not there anymore. Well, it's not. It's right there, part one. And you can also do some general set settings, change your streaming, change your buffers. Um, here's another area where you can just add where all of your UFS files, and it will automatically show up in the sound banks. And that's it for UVI. So let's move on to contact. As you can see, the GUI is just slightly different just because of how the interface has to work out. Um, other things that are going to be different, the release uh, curve is a little bit different, so it'll sound a little bit different on the releases. We do have the ability in contact to change the length of the tail um, to another 150%, as you can see down here, or 149%. Uh, the tooltips also show you what's going on, and this does change the length of the light reflections, by the way, since the IR response works a little bit differently in contact than in Mach 5. Still has the same high pass, low pass. The sound is relatively the same. You can change, turn on the delay. You can see the delay time here. It's all synced, quarter plus a sixteenth. You can change the feedback level, which is, you know, going on forever or not going on forever. Very short feedback, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Low pass. Okay, no fun of that. And again, you can go ahead and control. We'll learn the MIDI automation. And however, with contact, it's open Apple or um, command, depending on how old you are. Click, and that will give you back to the centered uh, off position. So it says all filters now off and bypassed, since we don't want any filtering uh, involved with this. So that's the gist of it. I hope you enjoy Randy's Chelest. Uh, you can get both versions for $119, or you can buy one or the other for $99. If you happen to buy the UVI and you say, you know what, this isn't... I, I'm not happy with the iLock situation. Please just email us and we'll figure out a solution for you. Uh, if you do get the contact version and say, you know what, I really want to hear what the UVI sounds like, again, just email us and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a solution for you. Uh, but we do encourage you to get both to test out the differences between the UVI workstation and contact and um, see what you like better. Uh, they are two different engines. Uh, they do sound a little bit differently. 
and uh, we'll leave it up to you to determine which one you like better. But please do give us feedback. We really want to hear from you on what you like and what you don't like and what we can do to make things better for you. All right. Thank you for listening. I apologize it for being extremely boring. I hope you're still awake. And uh, enjoy Randy's Celeste.